black and white. And um, it also makes it a whole lot smaller in, when you convert it to black and white. Um, and then all sort of in the same step, you're wanting to compress the images and resize them and change the DPI so that they're appropriate. Um, I have to be honest, I still can't understand why the DPI is so important, but if you don't set it right, it can tweak things. Uh, then all of these steps get you to a bunch of images that you still have to assemble into either um, a bunch of PDF or you know one PDF with a bunch of image pages or you have to do the OCR process and then your device. Your device might not be able to read PDF, it might want to read um, EPUB or Mobi or, or whatever. So you need some conversion software. Okay, so I brought, um, okay, I started to make a grid of some popular tools that might be helpful to you that are not, but it is not complete enough that I'm very proud of it, but I, I think it's a good starting point for the discussion. If, um, so, so these are some of the tools that I have tried to use in one way or another. And I will tell you my thoughts on them, but they're just my thoughts, okay? So first of all, uh, you, many of you probably already have a favorite renaming utility, but this one, bulk rename utility, I mean, that's, <laughs> that, it, it really is, it's awesome, and I'll show you how it works when we do, uh, we'll do a, a book together. Um, and then, Scan Tailor is some free software that runs on Windows that will take care of most all of the image processing steps. Um, probably the most popular worldwide program is this OpenOCR Cuneiform, but it, the website is 100% in Russian, even the download link. Like, I can't even figure out how to download it. But it has a user interface, and also has, or has a, uh, you know, GUI, and it also has a command line interface. So, um, and I know, I think, I'm pretty sure it runs on Windows and Linux. So, if, um, in fact, it's advertising running on Windows, but I, I can't prove that to you because I, I really couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, and then Adobe Acrobat X is, uh, is expensive, uh, but it's supposed to do some of the things that, that you want, but the OCR is rated as not, it's kind of being iffy. So most everybody who's in there, who's really interested in uh, doing um, book scanning is using the ABBYY fine reader, which if you look around enough, you can find it for about 105 bucks but you can spend up to 200 if you don't look. Um, okay, uh, Tesseract is... Um, Doctor Who plot element? Is what? A Doctor Who plot element. A Doctor Who plot element. It is an element of many plots. It <laughs> is, um, it's a very good OCR application, but all it does is OCR. So, um, it, it, as far as being a difficult, it's not a difficult to use command line application, but I, um, I decided not to use it because it looked like um, I would have better results with Find Reader anyway. So Sunny Page, I couldn't find a price on it, but it is a GUI that wraps around Tesseract that um, you might consider. And then if you're still wanting to just stick to free um, tools, um, you can use Tesseract to do your OCR and this HOCR to PDF. HOCR um, what it is is that Tesseract can output an HTML version of your uh, pages and so it knows where the letters are so that when you uh, try to put it in a PDF format it'll work. So that's, that's how you do that. You go, you use uh, some other image editor, uh, then you use Tesseract, then you use um, this uh, HOCR PDF. All right. All right. So this is what I decided to do. So I, um, after scanning all my images in, I, I get them in their directories, and I use the uh, the bulk rename utility. Uh, I take one folder, you know, the left side of the images, and I uh, rename them one through whatever, uh, odd numbers only, and then with the other side of the page, I do even numbers, right? 
and then uh, Scan Taylor will deskew, crop my images, and do all the image processing I need. Um, and then its output is usually TIFF files, which can make the files even bigger because if you take it, you know, a, a, you know, with these cameras, it's a two meg file. If I crop it to about half the size, it outputs it as a TIFF in color, it's like 20 megabytes. And so things can get out of hand quickly. But um, uh, usually I'm not scanning you know, full color images. I'm taking pictures of full color images and then cropping them down pretty good. Uh, and then I bought the fine reader. Okay, so what I wanted to do was uh, to sort of do a demo. I think that's the best way to do it. So, um, if you guys want to, you can sit or you can get up or whatever you want to do. But what I'm going to do is take this book out. And I brought um, a short book. Where are you? I brought Goodnight Arizona. Okay. So, so I'm kind of looking at this. Now this book is nice and rigid, so I'm not so worried about it falling into that crack. Wrong. But I'm going to open it up just a little bit, since that's what I would do if it was a normal text. One of the flaws in this design is that there's a too big of a gap down here for books to kind of slide in. So you kind of have to put a spacer. I just have a pencil in there. All right, so I tighten this up. All right, can someone hold the camera? Or hold the, uh, sure. the microphone? Mm -hmm. All right, so I turn these on. So these are running the firmware, and the flash screen shows me the firmware and everything. And then I just double check my cameras to make sure that it doesn't look horribly skewed. Okay. All right. When I'm using a small book, I like to put it a little bit closer to me, only because if I... Uh, if I have it too far that way, I have to reach too deep in to get up to the pages. All right. All right. So I put it down, and then I have this. This is the button I've got to uh, to you know trigger the button. So when I push that, it you know sends five volts. So I just hold it down and listen for both of them to go off. All right. We're about a fourth of the way done, so we'll have to be just a little bit patient. I should be reading this to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It says, greetings, Monument Valley. Can you guess? Anyway. All right, we're halfway. If I were using the SDM, the, it would actually wait for both sides to focus, and then they would both take the image at exactly the same time. Because the, the SDM is set up to help you take these 3D images that, uh, you know, were of splashing water or, you know, interesting things. How do they communicate with each other? These can't, the cameras? What, what, what you, if you use SDM, then there's one camera that's the master and the, and the rest are all slaves. So people will set up one master and then like 15 slaves. But usually it's just one or two. Is and, that like the stuff they used on filming the Matrix? Right. I don't know if that's what they use, but Simple. it's the same kind of thing, right? All right. So, um, and, oh. 
Oh, you always got to turn off your cameras because if you're using batteries and they die halfway through, it's really not good. So, um, let's see. Um, yeah, I'm just going to put this down. I don't know if that's working or not. So it's interesting that the the um, the camera can actually write to the write protected um, hmm. cards even, and the reason for that is that they actually aren't physically write protected. That switch just turns on and gives an indicator <coughs> to the machine as to whether or not it's write protected. You can still do whatever you want to it. Okay, so I'm going to call this folder Arizona 1. see it's got that CHDK folder here that's got all the firmware stuff in. It's actually really neat because you can create grids. I don't know if you guys saw on the camera but I had lots of lines across and mm -hmm. so that's the Jeff grid that I made but you can have just the 3 by 2 or 3 to 8 and it's really good for photographers because if they want to have you know custom grids they just create them. And, uh, I had taken a couple pictures before too. So I'm just taking the part that correspond. Okay, so this rename tool is so nice. If it would open. That's weird. If I click on it, tell it to open. So, um, what you have to do, I kind of had, the, the workflow is kind of tricky, but you, because uh, once you get the files in there, you can't get them out. But you put them in like this, you sort them based on, let's see, all right, so that's the lowest number on top. You have to select them all, because if you don't select them all, they don't work. And then over here you say, no. start numbering at... I should see if this is... Now, Jeff, are these uh, uh, from memory stack one? Like, there's all the odds? Yeah, or these are all the odds. Odds, the okay. I don't know okay. yet. Okay. Hit preview <laughs> and just look. All right. Okay, so this is... All the... All the... I'm going to call... Well, really, the page one is usually the... Is it on the right side? I don't remember now, but... Yeah. But I, I don't know that these have uh, page numbers on them. We'll call it odd today. We'll call these odd today. Odd today, yeah. Okay. There you go. So, and I could take off that first picture, but for the purposes of... <coughs> so I'm incrementing by two, right? So I select all of them. Oh, I gotta take off the name. So over here I remove the name. So it'll output them like that, right? So I hit rename. Alright. And now... As far as I can tell, there's no way to get those off of there unless you restart the app, which I don't want to do because I know what it's like to watch demos. <laughs> so put that in there, and then I sort by name. I got, let's see, oops, okay, 41's there on top, down to the last one. I'm going to start this one at 2, and then I rename these, great, okay, good. Now, 
I've got two folders. I'll put the images together. If I was being careful, I'd make sure I kept backups and things like that, but for now, we're just going to keep pushing forward. Scan Taylor is pretty fancy. Just wait till you see. I mean, for free, this is just an amazing application. I'm not getting the love I expect from my computer today. Here we go. Did you turn it back off and on again? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Like Frontline you. tech support. <laughs> um, yeah, let me close that. Okay. New project. Input directory. So it was on the desktop, and I called it. I think it's an Arizona one. Hmm. Okay. So there are all my images, and it's kind of funny that it's got the select all here. It all automatically adds them. So if I wanted to select them and take them out, I could, but for now we're just going to leave it. Okay. So, so it's important to uh, make sure you have the right DPI, and mine is about 300 DPI, and I sh you should measure your DPI by putting a... Uh, um, a ruler in there and then taking a picture of it and then counting out the pixels and all that stuff, but I'm not going to do that because I'm lazy, I guess. <laughs> okay, so here you see the images on the right. So first of all, you fix the orientation. So this one should be like that. Here, if it were open, you'd see that the book should be like that. Mm -hmm. So now I want to apply that to all of the every other page. So not all the pages, every other page. So now it's going to go down and fix that. Then on this next one, I rotate the other way, apply to every other page. So now they're all lined up correctly. Okay. You actually, it doesn't do the processing until you actually look at the image. So you're actually better off. Like if you were doing thousands of pages, you wouldn't hit, like if I hit this little arrow button, it would go and start doing the processing, but you know, I might as well just go through a bunch of steps and then let it batch everything at the same time. So split pages is if you're doing a book that's you know straight open, but since this whole thing is just one page, I'm going to tell it it's just one page and not to worry about it. All right, and then actually you have to change that for all pages. Okay, and then de-skew, that's a bad example, but in this 